sugar. Come on, somebody. Uh, We're going to pray for Elder Hickle. Joyce, she done worked 12 hours, y'all, and she still comes in with a praise and a worship and even a lesson. So, God, we thank you 
a blessing, Elder Joyce and Minister Holloway, God. We thank you for what you have imparted in them. And we thank you for blessing the babies, Father. So, God, have your way. Do what it is that you got to do. Move how you want to move. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Youth and young adults, you all are dismissed. Yes. I'll do the age. They sometimes they get a little confused. Uh, 5, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and even 17. If you're 18, you're welcome to stay. Amen. Yep, that's all of y'all. Your kids look real jazzy. We know you're going to bless the church. When your kids look good, baby, you know it looks nice as well. Amen. We will be in the book of Genesis, beginning at the sixth chapter. And if you're able, I would ask that you stand for the reading of the word. Genesis, the sixth chapter of the Bible, the Old Testament. Come on, somebody. First of all, come on, somebody. It's all right. It's all right. It come out of CA. Genesis, the sixth chapter. Bless your name, God. All right. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say hold on. We ain't going to judge you. Because we all didn't know where it was at one point either. We just know that it was in the beginning. It still went to the end. Come on, somebody. <laughs> all right. Okay, Genesis, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse one. It says, now it came to pass... When man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of man and they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves, all whom they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. I hear... Uh, were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God came into the daughters of man, they bore children to them. Those who were the mighty man who were of old man of renown. Verse 5, it says, Then the Lord said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention, intent of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. I will destroy, come on somebody, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast creeping thing and birds of the air for I am sorry that I have made them but the but uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord uh, then this is the genealogy of Noah Noah was just a man perfect in his generation Noah walked with God and Noah begot three sons Shem Ham and Japheth you may be seated in the presence of the Lord The title of this message is The Prophetic Ain't Always Popular. Come on here. The Prophetic Ain't, I know for you theologians, is not. The Prophetic Ain't Always Popular. Come on. <laughs> the Prophetic Ain't Always Popular. Now turn to your neighbor and say, don't kill the messenger. Amen. Amen. Okay, so in this text, we find multiple things are being revealed at the same time. The first and immediate was that God was not pleased with the wickedness that had taken place. Secondly, he was bringing forth his wrath. And third, he revealed that just because you are anointed, you are not exempt from sin. He revealed his character and integrity. He also showed that he protects those he loves during the ordained storm. He protects those that he loves during the ordained storm. Okay, now let me just line this up for you. Some theologians suggest that the sons of God were falling angels who began to take on the lust of the world. They took it upon themselves to rebel against the assignment of God and presented themselves in the image of man and married women of the world to recreate children as their image. God found himself grieved 
at this behavior and had had enough. See, Satan will always look for ways to disturb a godly thing. Satan will always look for ways to disturb a godly thing. Satan will always project and plan ways to pollute this earth with defiling things that are unpleasing to God. Satan will find ways to distract and disrupt our lives. Satan will find his ways in our godly business and look up for us to slip, fall, and break our spiritual backs. Who am I talking to today? You find yourself doing the right thing and living the right way, and here comes Satan trying to disrupt and disturb your life. You were reading your Bible, walking and talking with God. Come on, somebody. You turned away from your childlike ways, and here comes Satan. Come he will pull up memories and receipts on Facebook trying to remind yeah, you of yeah. your past. You ever get on Facebook? And that little memory from five years ago pops up with you having that cognac in your hand and your hat top on or your boot next to you and it says good times. You ever find yourself looking at old pictures and good times and something inside of you begins to twitch and itch and looking for something to say at this time I was living my life. Satan will always try to distract the believer. Here comes Satan conjuring up your blast from the past. Here comes Satan trying to disturb and disrupt your life because he knows and understands what has been called over you. So he's trying to go any means necessary to destroy those places. Who am I talking to today? You have found your you have found yourself from going from favor to favor to favor to favor that the restaurant is opening, the people are coming, and now you're in your blessing and you feel frustrated. Who am I talking to today? That God had to bring us back to the beginning. That he said that Satan always had a plan to disrupt. He had to take us to the beginning that said even though you're called in the world, you're not of the world, but you got to stay focused in the world. God is saying to us today that always the prophetic ain't always popular. The prophetic will tell you the truth, but it may not be popular. Come on, somebody. Of the environment. So God was calling those people at the time he was trying to get them to turn back to him in the moment but he seen that the people were going from favor to frustration uh, he even reminded me of Adam and Eve they were running around and they were what they perceived naked but nobody told them they were naked until they tasted something come on somebody you never know what you didn't have until you have a taste of something until you've been enticed by something and God is saying that I'm here to remind a believer that you cannot be enticed come on into destruction Satan will pull you into a place to try to destroy your life. Uh, see, the enemy wants to make a lie out of us. He plans to tempt us in the worst way uh, uh, so he can get rid of our godly DNA. See, that's why you can't walk around like the super saint. Come on, somebody. Because Satan has his demons looking in your profile, baby. And he's going to find that one thing that will entice you. That's why you be the super saint of the year because there will be something that Satan will get and will try to disrupt something inside of you. Oh, you driving, you don't left early for work. You got to be there at 7, you left at 6, and here it is 6.30, and there's a bunch of traffic, come on, on 75, so you can't go get the donut that you want to eat, come on, somebody, the coffee that you want to get, the crock that you want to flirt with, 
because you're stuck in traffic and the priority should be that you gotta get to work. But you become frustrated because you can't feed your flesh and you begin to cuss. The super saint on a Tuesday frustrated. You know went from highly favored to frustrated. And God is saying that we cannot be the super saint in the hour. But what he's telling us is that we have to have a close relationship with him because at any given moment you could be enticed. At any given moment something can disrupt your at any given moment, hell can show up in your marketplace. At any given moment, frustration will show up in your health. Come on. At any given moment, Satan is trying to devour and destroy your prayer life. At any given moment, Satan is trying to take you out of your posture and put you and take you out of your posture and your protection and put you in the eyes. to do with Genesis, I'll tell you. Because see, there were godly sons who were put on the earth to do their earthly assignment. And what took place was, they begin to start to look and see what looked good and sounded good. So they begin to join with the people. And so they fell from grace, and they begin to develop themselves in sin. My God, my God. See, we are in times where the prophetic ain't so popular. What you're talking about, Pastor, what I mean is that we're seeing the same behaviors that are listed here in the good book. However, those uh, that belong to God are responding carelessly. Well, those that belong to God are responding carelessly. Why? Because the prophetic ain't always popular when a present is not involved. Uh, Just 
know somebody is still coming. Yeah. Uh, I know your mama used to come home and she would say, if my house, your mama and your daddy would say, if my house ain't clean, yeah. I'm tearing everybody up. And no, you found her on the phone talking to your auntie. You thought you were safe. And no, that she was in a good mood when she came in the house. You thought the whooping was over. But baby, so she hung up that phone. She said, go get my switch. Now go get my extension cord. Because the wrath is still coming. Who am I talking to today? Uh, uh, you thought you was in the, in the green. Oh, well, y'all, she on, she on the phone. She, she in a good mood. Because what she displayed over that telephone, it didn't sound too promising. But she came in the door. She's still happy. But as soon as she hangs up that phone. Uh, come, on uh, come on in here. Uh, in your mind, you forgot about it. You forgot because the kitchen is clean now. But all that she called at 9 o'clock. And you still didn't clean it on a Saturday. You think that I don't went to school all week in college. Although it wasn't clean at night, it's five o'clock now. So why could she possibly be still mad at something that took place at nine o'clock and she wants to whoop me at five? Well, well, it wasn't that you did the act. It was that she didn't do it at the time she told you to. Come on, somebody. Just because the whooping ain't happening right now for the believer, don't mean that it ain't coming. And God says that we can't operate carelessly in this season. You got to stand for righteousness. Why are you not concerning yourself with Roe v. Wade? You better be concerning yourself with you and God. Because at the end of the day, he's the one that writes the plan. At the end of the day, he's the one that finishes the story. At the end of the day, I got to concern myself. Come on, somebody with godly business. I can't concern. No, you should be attached, attached to the thing. I know what's going on over there. But see, I can't be wasting my time and my biblical intellect arguing with people online when I'm not in the room to help the decision. Come on, somebody. I can't be arguing with you about abortions and let's be right and kind about this. There are some who use their abortion as a form of birth control. But at the end of the day, in the believer teetering the fence of their Christian life. Either you are in or you are out. Again, I know this ain't popular. However, it's purposeful. 
There are many believers who will leave a place of uncomfortableness and search for a place of comfortability. Instead of going through growing pains, they rather medicate their condition. God said in verses 3 and 4 of Genesis, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. God will not allow believers to stay in the state of rebellion for too long. At some point, he will end the relationship. Who am I talking to today that God has given you some decisions that you have been procrastinating on and have moved into a state of rebellion? At some point, that decision will no longer be a choice of yours. At some point, the decisions that God has given you about your spiritual walk, about your marriage, about your single life, about your marketplace assignment, about your entrepreneur business, about where you are mentally, it will no longer be a decision of yours. Now, the prophetic is a tough place to be. And I pray you don't leave your covering and go somewhere where they serve your donuts and don't know your name and ain't interested in saving your soul. I pray you allow this word to penetrate in your mind that you will allow yourself to move on the action. Now moving to my second point is God showed his wrath was coming. The condition then and the condition now of the world is still the same. What you're talking about, Pastor? Sexual perversion, demonic activity, man's evil heart and ways, corruption and violence. Sexual perversion has taken rapid over this earth. They have a talk show, uh, the host is actually interesting, uh, where they, it's for single people. And you go on to the talk show, and you can tell them what your age is, how many kids you got, and all of that jazz. Uh, it's supposed to be for single people, but there was at least three or four episodes where married people were going onto the website, and they were looking for a sister wife. Uh, and then uh, the people were engaging in that, and, and, and actually interviewing, and God is saying, I never called marriage to be a place of perversion. Uh, we have gotten ourselves to a point, not all but some, that we are allowing the things of this world to infiltrate in our lives, and that's why God is saying that he cannot distinct the difference from a believer and a non-believer. Another thing, as I said, is the man's evil heart. We are finding believers who lack of forgiveness. And I don't know why God put that on my heart this morning, but he said there's a lot of believers who are walking around in this earth that they have not forgave for things that I have called forth in their life, and they won't give grace when I've graced their entire presence. Who am I talking to today? You are upset with a family member. You are upset with a friend. And God says that place of upsetness, if you allow it to lay residency, the residential demon will sit himself right in posture in your heart. And when you need to be free from that thing, you become bondage in that thing. God was grieved at heart in the text because he watched it unfold. There is sometimes where the Lord is grieved in his heart with our actions. He will promote us to do better and be watchful as, as it unfolds in our life. However, the good thing is that he has provided grace for us to get it right. God's character and integrity, come on somebody. His character and integrity shows through the text. He loved the people enough to give them an opportunity to turn back to him. He didn't do what uh, what they he didn't do what we do. Come on, somebody. He didn't immediately respond out of anger. He allowed grace to show up for those who were willing to receive it. God provides grace to save and to convert the believer. God will provide grace to save the believer and convert their mind out of that action. God provides grace to give us another chance to correct what we thought was right. My last point, and I'll close. The prophetic pulls out our purpose. The prophetic pulls out our purpose. Noah found favor with God because his heart condition was in the right place. 
he could receive the truth of the matter and respond in godly maturity. Maturity. There's times that God will not allow the truth. Come on. He won't allow the truth to immediately take place because he knows the heart is not ready to receive it. That's why the old saying is the truth what? Hurts. But God is calling us forth in the season that he's building our biblical abilities and our strength into receiving the truth. Noah found the favor because his heart wanted the truth. Noah found favor because he was focused on the things of God. There are a lot of believers who shift from focus of God and shift a shift on the problem that's in front of them. And I'm not suggesting that you should ignore your problem, but you should look up on the hill and consult with the one that can fix the problem. There are many times that believers go to family members, they go to the internet, they go to every other place, but to the holy place that will give them the right and accurate resolution for their problem. And so God is saying that our condition of our hearts has to be in the right place in order for us to receive the truth of the matter. Noah found favor with God and with his family. Now, uh, the research says it took Noah anywhere from 55 to 75 years to build the ark. Imagine God gave you a word that was going to come to pass and it took you 55 to 75 years for that thing to prosper. But what God wanted to remind me in this text was, even though it took him that long to produce what was needed, it also gave him favor with his family. See, there are times when you are in the right position with God, your family is looking and they're seeing your behavior, and then your family will then be desired by that same thing and that same anointing that they will begin to get themselves in order. It says Noah and his sons were building their arms. Even though no rain had failed, even though that Noah was being made fun of, Noah still stuck to the plan. Even though it didn't happen in two weeks, even though he couldn't even see it, Noah still stuck to the plan. Who am I talking to today that even though you don't see it, you need to stick to the plan. If Noah can do it for 50 something years, baby, you can do it in five. God Noah found favor with him and the favor extended to his family. Due to Noah's favor and his obedience, it saved his family. See, our family will find breakthrough in our obedience. Had Noah not been obedient in building the ark, come on, everybody would have been washed away. How Noah not being consistent in the midst of the building and the process, everything would have been washed away. Who am I talking to today? There is purpose that is inside of you that although there's distractions of this world, but you delayed your purpose and not understanding that is attached to somebody else's breakthrough. So God is saying in this hour, you can find favor just as Noah did out of your obedience. Give God a hand. He said, Father God, we thank you for giving us an opportunity, God. We thank you for blessing us today. That, Father, whatever in our hearts that does not belong, oh, God, we thank you, Father, that you shall bless us today. God, I pray for the believer today, oh, God, that, Father, you shall bless them, Father. You shall bless them, oh, God. That, God, that they will find themselves converting from the things, Father, away from this world. God, I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, 
that you shall bless them, O oh God. That, Father, they will convert their mind like never before. God, I thank you that you are blessing the person today. That they renew their mind. They turn away from their problem, oh God. And you convert their faith, oh God. That is full and unmovable and unshakable in this season. God, I thank you that today our family problems shall be solved. I thank you that restoration shall take place. I thank you, oh God, generational curses shall be broken. I thank you, oh God, that power will happen in the hour. I thank you, oh God, that you're stirring the environments around us. I thank you, oh God, that men and women and children shall go back, Father, to the place, oh God. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, you shall bless them like never before. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus, you shall move like never before. Now, Father, I pray for the one that has not given their life unto you. I pray, Father, that you shall give them an opportunity right now, oh God, that, God, you shall bless them like never before. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You shall be with them like never. God, have your way. Now, Father, if there is a person in this building that have not given their life to you, I pray, oh God, that, Father, they repeat this word. That, Father, I repent. I welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And, Father, through your dunamis power, you raise him, oh God, on the third day. If you just said that you just gave your life to Christ, give God a hand clap. We are going to transition to tithes and offerings. Stephon's going to play a song for us. And Elder J is going to orchestrate the tithes and offering. Praise God. We have several ways to give. You can give by Cash App, that's Chosen Ministries, Dollar Sign Chosen Ministries. You can give by Simple Give App, Chosen Ministries. We also have the Simple Give text. You can text the word GIVE to 513-790-4446. We also have the Venmo app at Chosen-Ministries. And finally, you can mail in a strong check to 30 Triangle Park Drive, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45246. When you have your offering, please stand. And repeat after me. I'll give you all a few minutes. Even if you're giving on Cash App, I ask that you put your phone up in the air and repeat after me. If you already mailed that strong check, just put your hand up to let us know that it's in the mail. Amen. So those of you who are standing, repeat after me. Freely I sow. And by faith, I watch God make my harvest grow. Amen. You can bring your tithes and offering up and put it in the basket. Jesus, we thank you for this offering, God. We thank you for allowing those who were able to give to give, God. We ask that you bless those who are unable to give. God, let this uh, offering be used to build up your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Before we dismiss, we want to remind you all of the upcoming uh, revival. The flyer is out on Facebook. We will have some uh, hard copies if you all want to uh, come up uh, next week. Uh, to receive some uh, to, to receive some of the hard copies because we are asking that you do take some of the hard copies, put them in your place of employment if you're able, get permission first, and also pass them out in your neighborhood. We are looking for God to show up, show up, and we don't want anyone to miss that opportunity. Again, that's July 7th, that's a Thursday, July 8th, that's a Friday. We're going to have an opportunity to be here again on the on Saturday starting at 5 o'clock. 
and then we will close out here again on Sunday, uh, July the 10th. So we have some awesome um, guest speakers and, and ministry leaders, so please, uh, if you haven't already shared it on your Facebook page or Instagram, please do so. Um, share it with someone that's not your friend. I, I just, I'm going to go down my friend list and just check everybody, uh, tag everybody. So uh, that's just a suggestion uh, that God has told me to do. Uh, so let us stand. I have one more announcement while you all are standing, preparing to uh, dismiss. Uh, we will have Bible study this Wednesday. Uh, right now, it's going to be via Facebook Live, our Chosen Ministry page, which starts at 7 p.m. If you have not already received or got a copy of the Repentance book, we are going to, uh, right now, it may change, so be flexible. We are going to be in Chapter 3 of the Repentance book. So again, Facebook Live, um, um, possibly our conference line. Uh, but I will let you know, go to me. I don't think that's going to happen. But please encourage others to, to come in. However, uh, if you um, if they don't have a Facebook page, uh, invite, them, invite them to your home. Invite them to the library so they can share on your Facebook page. So uh, we want to get as many people to hear this word. It's been a long time since Bible study, and I'm glad that God has given us opportunity to get back together. Uh, as a corporate house to study the word. Come even if you don't have the repentance book, you will leave with some, some revelation knowledge. Amen? Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for another opportunity to come into your house and receive a word, a word that is comforting, a word that is correcting, a word that is uh, strictly from you, God. We thank you, God. A word that we can go out today and next week and be built up and do your work, God. We ask that you continue to pour into our pastor what she poured out, God. God, I pray for anyone here that uh, is not leaving, that's that's leaving the same way that they came in, God. It's still change. It's still time for them to repent. It's still time for them to, to ask you, God, for a change, God, because today your word has gone forward. Your presence was here, God. So we want to make sure that everyone received it and be able to be different as they leave this place. We ask all these things in your perfect and precious son Jesus' name, who is the Christ. We say thank you and amen. Amen. amen.